Hey, hey everybody, welcome to another ProCon know-how video. It has been quite a while since I uploaded something, but here we are. So for today's clip, what we're going to do is we're just going to run through the basics of modeling a concrete structure in Sumo, adding some loads, and then successfully running a analysis. All right, so this is what your standard concrete or rather standard Sumo interface will look like. And one of the first things we need to do is we need to import our materials in our materials table down here. So you've got two buttons. You've got import material, which will import a material from the materials database. And then you've got uh, the option to add a user-defined material. But in general, we'll import the material from the materials database. So here in this window, we'll change from steel to concrete. And for our specific case here, we'll import a 30 MPA concrete and we'll call that structural concrete. You don't need to name it, but it does become useful, especially with larger modules. Then we go over into our sections table and here we can either import a section from the sections database or we can define a section within this Sumo table. So I'm going to import from the database. And in general, if you look at all of your concrete sections that are available you will notice that you will need to make use of the uh, the workflow to add additional cross sections to this table which is quite easy all right so we're going to add a 300 by 300 and we'll call this a concrete concrete column we're quite happy with that and then we'll add a 250 by 250 and we'll call this concrete beam for now all right so now we can start modeling so one of the first things we'll do is i'm just going to add some pad footings and i'm going to put my grid snapping on and snap right to the origin over there and then i'm going to create a few copies so linear copy I want to space these at five meters, create two copies, pick the increment. Yes. And now to think of, okay, what else, what else do I want to do? So I'm going to put uh, two more of these on the outside, also five meters. Okay, let's make, uh, let's make three and vectors and increment. Yes. I'm going to put one over there and then I want one in between these two so I want that one at 7.5 so this is just to just mix it up a bit right so now I'm going to go over to my columns I'm going to select my 300 by 300 and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a linear copy so three of those, yes. Then you copy that direction, two of those. And I just do that all around. All right. And then what I can do is I can add my slab. So you can either create a level or you can add it in the 3D workspace quite easily and i'm going to add a slab on the second floor as well and then i'm going to copy all of this up one floor okay so there's the basics of a of a concrete structure of course there's a lot more you can do than just this so this is just for or to serve as an example. So we want also a monolithic beam to run in between those columns in the middle. So I'm just going to change my thickness quickly to a 250 mil thick slab. And then I want to add a 300 wide monolithic beam. So I'm going to set it section width to 300 section depth also to oh, let's keep it at 500 
And now I need to calculate the offset, and the offset is just the slab thickness plus the section depth divided by 2, and that's 375. And then I'm going to add my monolithic beam into my model and do the same down there as well. Okay, I can also add a cross if I want to, it's all up to you. All right, we can use inclined plane shells to model uh, stairs as well. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to define my load cases. So I'm going to have my DL and LL, which I'm just going to say these are my nominal dead loads. And I'm going to have my nominal live loads as well so i'm going to tick the self-weight button here to ensure that self-weight is added to the dead load load case and then i'm going to start adding my dead load so under the loads tab i'm going to use my hosted loads let's say a a 0 0.1 for our screed on all three floors and then we're going to say a one kilonewton per square meter live load per floor as well. Okay, so you can make use of all sorts of point loads, line loads, area loads, etc. So let's go now, oh, before we go to load combinations, let's click on our parameters for our dead load. So that is the reference standard. You can change that within loads in the loading, that loading function over there. So I'm going to change my type of action. This is going to be permanent self weight and my combination category is going to be, let's say, public areas crowding, perfect. Okay, we can do the same here. So type of action, this will be variable floors and roofs. And this is also going to be public areas. Say so, okay. So here in load combinations, I can either create the load combinations myself, or in the case where I have defined the parameters of the load cases, I can have Sumo generate the load combinations for me. So once you click on that, it asks you for all of these functions you can tick on and off and then you can hit OK and it generates all of those load combinations for us. So it generated a total of 12 load combinations, which is fantastic. And then we're good to go. So what we can do now, we can go to our analysis and settings. For now, we're happy with a linear analysis type. I'm going to check under concrete design to make sure that the enable reinforcement design is ticked and the standard and the concrete strength. Here we can set also the top cover. So I want 50 on all accounts. I'm going to hit apply and then OK. And I'm going to hit yes. And then it's going to give me at least a warning. So it says here ULS load factor is zero, load case DL. Etc. This is all for the load combination. So you see for combination one, it's just got an SLS factor and no ULS. So it's just warning us there. And we can proceed with it anyway. So here are our results. So first and foremost, we can look at our displacement and we can cycle through all of the different load combinations can proceed to our reactions as well and our supports and we can cycle through those or filter out the ones we want look at our beams which will include columns as well so there's our axial forces red is compressive and blue is tensile we can switch to our x moments our y shear forces forces torsion Y moments of X shear, and then we've got our shells. 
So we've got our membrane and place stresses. If I have it correctly, uh, membrane membrane is in plane and your plate is out of plane stresses. We are predominantly interested in the reinforcement category. So here we are in our reinforcement category. We've got multiple components. We've got MX top, MX bottom, MY top, MY bottom. And then we've got our ASX top, ASX bottom. So let's look at ASX bottom. And these are our reinforcement contours. So what the program has done is it's run an FEA on those slabs. And then using the wooden armor method, it's converted those results into bending moments and then did the, the necessary calculations to provide us with these uh, recommended reinforcement contours. So you got there your square millimeter per meter. And then the dashed lines, they indicate the direction that we're looking in. So this reinforcement will span parallel to those dashed lines. I can go to ASX top. Then we've got ASY bottom as well, and ASY top. Okay, and then we can look at these stress concentrations, or rather, well, there would be there would be a stress concentration there as well. So if I look at MY bottom, you'll see the effect. All of these have on the model. All right. So I hope that that's useful. Uh, what we would do in from here in general is proceed with our design links, make use of our base design links, or create some design groups to design all of our bases, our columns, and then our slabs will most likely identify sections to export as subframe strips where we will design our monolithic beams as well so that you found this useful and yeah hit that like button and subscribe to our channel uh, i'll be posting more of these in due course as well